I know what you're thinking. My Honeycomb Bravo Autopilot looks very different than yours. What you see here is a control unit for a Garmin GFC 500 Autopilot. It's one of Garmin's most recent state-of-the-art autopilots that are being installed in real aircraft today. I thought it would be useful to bring into this video so we can compare a real-life autopilot control head to the autopilot that's found in the Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant. Honeycomb's done a very nice job here. You can see most of the autopilot functions you can find in the real-life GFC 500. Heading and heading. Nav, nav. Approach and approach. The rev button is not, that's back course. I'll, I'll explain that later. Altitude hold and altitude hold. Vertical speed, vertical speed, IAS, IAS. And the missing yaw damper, I made one of my user selectable buttons, as you can see. The primary difference between a real autopilot and the honeycomb autopilot is how you select changes. In the real autopilot, I have a separate heading knob to change the heading. Here in the honeycomb, I turn the left knob to heading and then adjust it with the right knob. The real autopilot has its own altitude select. In the honeycomb, I would tune to ALT and then turn the right knob. And likewise for VS and IAS, I have its own dedicated knob for up and down. And in the honeycomb, I would have to turn the left knob to VS or IAS and then use the right knob to change it. So Honeycomb has done a really nice job in creating a very streamlined autopilot that mimics the full functionality of a real-life autopilot. Okay, let's get rid of the GFC 500 and focus on what we're here to do. Learn the Honeycomb Bravo autopilot. Before proceeding with this tutorial, if you have not already watched my video on the autopilot vertical speed bug, you need to stop right now, watch that video, fix your autopilot, and then come back to the tutorial, or else your autopilot's not going to function properly. Okay, here we are in the cockpit of the TBM 930. If you look at the top right here, this is where the autopilot information is in the simulator. And that corresponds to what you see down here in the Bravo Autopilot. If you look over here on the PFD, this area that I am highlighting with the mouse is where the enunciators are. And you can see it's all dark now because nothing is selected. Now I'll quickly run down the features of the Autopilot. We'll start with the left knob. The left knob is always for adjusting a value. The buttons themselves are for selecting the various Autopilot modes. The left knob is always selecting what's going to be adjusted with the right hand knob. For example, the left knob is selected altitude. If you look at the primary flight display where my mouse is, when I turn the right knob, the altitude pre-select will climb to 5000. If I turn it to the left, it decreases. If I turn it to the right, it increases. So now if we turn the left knob to VS and select the VS mode on the autopilot, you can see where my mouse is, VS is selected in the autopilot, and it's currently zero feet per minute. To increase the feet per minute, I have to turn the right knob to the right. You can see that 1500 feet per minute is selected in both spots here that I'm showing with my mouse. Now if I move the left knob to heading, what it's going to do is move this heading bug that my mouse is pointing to. Now if I hit the heading button, what it will do is move the heading bug directly to my current heading. And now as you can see, if I turn the right knob to the left and to the right, you can see my heading bug moving to the left and to the right. Now if I move the left knob over to course, in order to see that, I can't do that with the magenta GPS source. I have to change it to a nav source, so a VOR in this case. And if I turn the knob to the left and the right, you can see that my VOR radial selection moves to the left and to the right. Now I'll change the nav source back to the original GPS magenta lines. Now lastly, I'll turn the left knob down to IAS. And IAS is used in lieu of vertical speed. When you set an altitude, there's two ways to get there. The vertical speed, which we've already set or alternately the IAS, which will be above this indicated airspeed tape. If I hit the IAS button, you can see that vertical speed went away, and in its place is FLC and zero knots. So I go over here to the top of the airspeed tape. If I turn the right knob, you'll see I set it to 140 knots. 
So the autopilot will climb to 5,000 feet at 140 knots indicated airspeed. Now you can see FLC here on the PFD, also up here on the autopilot. FLC is flight level change. It's the same thing as IAS. It's just different names for the same thing. So now that I've explained what the left and the right knob does, let's put our attention to the buttons themselves. So heading is going to make it follow the heading bug. Nav will follow your GPS course or your nav course, the green lines, if that's selected. The approach button is for flying a coupled approach to landing on an ILS or an RNAV GPS approach. The rev button is for flying an ILS back course approach. This means you're using the instrument landing system localizer information to fly to the opposite runway. There is no glide slope when you do this and the REV button essentially provides correct sensing for left and right. If you didn't hit that, it would be opposite. I'm really not going to get into this much on this tutorial because if you don't know what this is, you'll probably hardly ever use it. Plus, most of the back course approaches are being replaced by RNAV overlays. The ALT button is altitude hold. Whenever you press that button, it's going to hold the current altitude that you're at. So if you're climbing, it's going to level you off and hold you there. The vertical speed and the IAS buttons we've already kind of touched on because we actually have to activate those to set them. But the VS is going to make you climb to your selected altitude at a vertical speed and the IAS will make you climb at an indicated airspeed. Now that we have everything set up, I'm going to do a takeoff. But to do a takeoff, we actually use this button. That's, even though it's called a go around button, normally it's called a takeoff slash go around or a to go button. Essentially, when you press the red button, it's going to make these magenta command bars. If you look here at the PFD, you'll see magenta command bars rise up to a fixed pitch attitude. So that's a climb attitude that you would use for either a takeoff or a missed approach go around. So now we'll take off and apply everything that we've learned in this autopilot orientation. So as I climb out here, I'm going to try and climb to those magenta V-bars or command bars. Put the gear up and flaps up. And shortly I'll engage the autopilot here. When I hit the autopilot button and yaw damper, now what will happen is it will pitch up to those magenta command bars and it will hold that pitch in a climb. Now I could keep continuing to climb, but I'm going to engage the IAS mode this point. So let me zoom in here. You can see I have 140 knots specified. The airspeed is going to continue to 140 knots and it will stay at 140 knots until I reach 5,000 feet. So now as I'm climbing, say I don't want to climb at 140 knots and uh, I want to climb at a vertical speed and I don't want it to be 1,900, I want it to be 1,500 engage the vertical speed mode and now you can see my vertical speed is dropping to 1500 feet per minute and it doesn't matter what my airspeed is no longer being held that's going to fluctuate just to maintain the 1500 foot per minute vertical speed and it will continue to climb at this rate all the way to the preset of 5000 feet so now let's say air traffic control told me to level off at 3000 feet I'll start by slowing my vertical rate to something lower and when I get to 3,000 feet I'm going to hit the altitude hold button right now. So now it'll hold me at 3,000 feet you can see the aircraft is leveled off it's no longer climbing and the vertical speed is zero. You can see I'm still in heading mode. I'm going to change that to nav so it'll follow my magenta line. It'll turn right to bring this CDI back to the left and you can see I'm turning right and I'm heading more toward this magenta line on the MFD. So you can see the aircraft is tracking my FMS which is set to GPS. 
I'm in autopilot engage, yaw damper on, altitude hold, and I'm not climbing. So now we've flown the autopilot in heading mode, nav mode. We've used altitude hold, vertical speed, indicated airspeed. Now all we have left to do is use approach mode. So I've loaded up an approach and armed the approach into Lancaster. And it'll, when I cross Bokra, it should capture the glide path. You can see over here in the white, what's armed, you have V-Alt-GP. That means that the uh, glide path is armed. What's in green is what is active. So this will turn green once we cross Bokra. At this point, I'm going to put my gear down and put in a notch of flaps. And oh, we can see that the glide path has captured. It's now green and I'm starting my descent down to the airport. You can see the altitude is dropping. So I'll slow the plane down a little bit. Let me take a peek out the windshield and you can see the runway right there off the nose. And I'm descending quite well down the glide path to the airport. Turn my yaw damper off. Now the purpose of the video is not to watch the airplane fly all the way down the approach to landing, just to demonstrate the approach mode of the autopilot. And with that done, I have uh, demonstrated pretty much all the functions of the autopilot except for the REV back course, which I'm not going to demo, it's a little bit outside the scope of this tutorial. Well, I hope I've given you a better understanding how to use your Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrants Autopilot. Enjoy using it. It really takes a little bit of workload off of the pilot when you have the autopilot right there at your fingertips.